In this video lesson, I'm going to show how to factor a, a trinomial of the form x squared plus bx plus c. Now, in this case, the uh, quadratic term is a 1x squared. And it doesn't have to be x. It could be a different variable. But the coefficient is 1. If the coefficient isn't 1, then we would call that ax squared plus bx plus c. And, and the factoring is a little bit different. And I do have another video for that if you want to take a look at it. So to factor a trinomial such as x squared plus bx plus c really means to write that trinomial as the product of its factors, which is usually two binomials. And we're going to take a look at an example uh, using algebra tiles here and then five uh, al just algebra ones on the next page. So we're asked to factor x squared plus 5x plus 6 using algebra tiles. Now to factor that really means to take an x squared, five x's and six unit tiles and 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 rearrange them so they they form a completely filled in rectangle so here's an x squared and then here's five x's and then that's the six now the problem with this configuration it doesn't make a completely filled in rectangle uh, we have kind of an empty space here so that would not help us factor x squared plus five x plus six but if we take an x squared and put it here and then if we put three axes on one side and two on the other, then those six unit tiles, these six unit tiles, will actually fit right in here. And it makes a completely filled in rectangle. And that's the only configuration that will work with an x squared, five axes, and six unit tiles. So it's a completely filled in rectangle. You see, the reason this works is because we've taken the five axes and broken it into a three x a three three of them and then two of them and you see three times two makes six that's why those six unit tiles will fit there so to factor it now is just to determine what the dimensions are this would be an x plus another one and another one and then across the top we have an x and then three more and so across the top we would call this x plus three and on the side here, this would be x plus 2. So that means that x squared plus 5x plus 6 would factor into x plus 3 times x plus 2. And it doesn't matter which order you write these. If you want to write the x plus 2 first, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. So <clears throat> notice these numbers 3 and 2 here. are They're special numbers that relate to the 5 and the 6 this way. The 5 is the sum of 3 and 2 and the 6 is the product of the 3 and 2 and that's the method you use algebraically to do this without algebra tiles and so the reason that worked is again because we broke this down to 3 axes here and 3 axes and 2 axes here so that this made 6 an area for the 6 unit tiles and and because of that it, it was a completely filled in rectangle and it works okay so these two numbers add to that middle coefficient and multiply to the number of the constant on the end. And we use that, that's the main algebraic method to factor this. And so we use that method in an example two in the second page. We're asked to factor x squared plus 7x plus 12. So in order to factor this, we need to look for two numbers that add to 7 and that multiply to 12. Now, think of the multiplying first. Don't look at what adds to 7 because there's, a, there's actually an infinite number of numbers that add to 7. You could say, well, there aren't that many. There's like 1 and 6, uh, 2 and 5, 3 and 4. But there's also numbers like, for example, negative 3 and positive 10. That adds to 7. Okay? So there actually are an infinite number of pairs. But there only are uh, a, a smaller number that actually multiply to 12. So look at the factors of 12 first, and then find the factors of 12 that actually do add to 7. And the numbers that multiply to 12, there aren't that many. There's 1 and 12. 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Okay, so there aren't that many different numbers. And the ones we need here, of course, are 3 and 4 because they add to 7. 2 and 6 doesn't, 1 and 12 doesn't add to 7, but 3 and 4 do. So 3 and 4 multiply to 12 and add to 7. So you need both of those conditions. And so because those numbers satisfy the, both those conditions, then the factors would be x plus 3 and x plus 4. You can always check any... Um, factoring by expanding to see if you get what you started with. So for example, the expanding would look like this. If I'm expanding out uh, x plus 3 times x plus 4, if we multiply x by x, that's x squared. x times 4 would be uh, 4x. 
3 times x would be uh, 3x, and 3 times 4 is 12. And so the two terms in the middle, the 4x and 3x, we can combine them together to get 7x, and the 12 is on the end, of course. And so notice that this is exactly the same thing we started with. So that's how you can check any factoring, just by expanding to see if you get what you started with. Uh, second one, x squared plus 11x plus 18. So we need to find two numbers that add to 11, multiply to 18. So again, um, focus on the factors of 18. There aren't that many pairs of numbers that multiply to 18. The numbers that we need are 2 and 9. They uh, add to 11 and, and they, of course, multiply to 18. There are other numbers, uh, pairs of numbers that multiply to 18, for example, 3 and 6, but they don't add to 11. Okay, so 2 and 9 are the numbers that, that do work here. So the factors then would be x plus 2 and x plus 9. Now we're going to start getting a few negatives here in C. So adds to 1. If you just see an x, the coefficient is 1, so adds to 1, and multiplies negative 20. So don't miss the negative sign there. Uh, if, if you just wrote 20, there are no numbers that uh, add to 1 and multiply to 20. Okay, so make sure you get the sign there. So now the thing about multiplying to negative 20, that means that one number has to be negative and one positive. And so <clears throat> the numbers that work here are 5 and negative 4. The 5 has to be positive because it adds to positive 1. So 5 and negative 4 add to positive 1 and they multiply to negative 20. So then this would factor into x plus 5 and x minus 4. On to d, uh, adds to negative 8. So we're looking for terms that add to negative 8 and multiply to positive 15. Now, notice that they add to a negative sum, but they multiply to a positive. In that case, that means that both numbers have to be negative. And remember, remember, a negative times a negative is a positive, and it's only negatives. Uh, well, I guess a negative and a positive could add to a negative, but uh, the two numbers are both negative, so they add to a, a negative sum. So, again, focus on the factors of 15. Um, 3 and 5 or 1 and 15, there's only two pairs of numbers that do that, or integer numbers anyway. Uh, the 1 and 15 no, is no good, but the, uh, the 3 and 5 work, as long as they're both negative. So, negative 3 and negative 5 add to negative 8, and they do multiply to positive 15. So the factors would be x minus 3 and x minus 5. And one last example, uh, x squared minus 3x minus 10. We're trying to factor that, so we're looking for two numbers that add to negative 3 and multiply to negative 10. Now notice in this case the sum and the product are both negative. If the product is negative, like this one back here, then one number has to be positive and one negative. So think of, well, what multiplies to, uh, well, 10 or negative 10 in this case, actually. There's only two pairs of numbers that do. Um, uh, if you consider the signs. Uh, to multiply to 10, it's either 1 and 10 or 2 and 5. And we can't get the 1 and 10 to work because it adds to negative 3. No matter if it's negative 1 and positive 10 or positive 1 and negative 10, it doesn't add to negative 3. But we can make the 5 and 2 work. And uh, the 5 has to be negative because the, it adds to a negative sum. Negative 5 and 2 add to negative 3 and negative 5 and 2 do multiply negative 10. So then the factors would be x minus 5 and x plus 2. And so that's how you factor x squared plus bx plus c.